everyone and welcome back to my video. If you are new here, my name is Amber Scott and this is my weekly Bible study. have been reading the book of Samuel. Actually, that's 1st Samuel and 2nd Samuel. I forgot to make that clear in my last video, so sorry. So this week's video is going to be a little bit different because the Bible study book actually groups 1st Samuel and 2nd Samuel into one week. I'm still going to be doing 1st and 2nd Samuel in one week, but I'm going to divide it up. So today is Sunday and you will be seeing the video of 1st Samuel coming out, which is what we're going to talk about now. But then on Wednesday, I will be posting another video of 2 Samuel. So it's still one week, but it just gives me a little bit more time because I did not have enough time to read 1 and 2 Samuel um, because I didn't realize it was both until like yesterday and you know, the, it didn't happen. So anywho, so the books of 1 and 2 Samuel combined cover over 150 years of history, which is a lot. And there are a lot of names and different people and different stories and different kings and it's a lot to keep up with. And I'm going to be honest with you, as I was reading just 1 Samuel, I've already gotten confused on who is who and who did what in some instances. So this could be a little confusing. <laughs> so Samuel was born to a originally barren woman named Hannah. So Hannah had prayed to God and said that if she ever had a son, she had vowed to give her son solely to God. So Hannah sent her son, Samuel, to live in the temple with the priest and to be holy and dedicated to God. So Samuel became a God-fearing man who um, took the laws of the Torah very seriously. Um, he founded a popular school of prophets at the time as well. So one of the questions that the Bible study asks is, what do you know about prophecy today? And what does Paul say in regarding the gift of prophecy, which is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 14.1? 1 Corinthians 14.1 says, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. So Paul tells us that we should desire the gift of prophecy. But in today's society, it's kind of hard to understand the gift of prophecy. It's hard to discern what is from God and what is from earthly or worldly things. You know, there are people out there that claim to be um, prophets or like fortune tellers that are lying and that are not real. And then there are some who are spiritually real that God has given that gift to. And it's looked on as like, you're a freak if you have a spiritual gift. And it's just something that we as a society don't really acknowledge or take seriously anymore. But Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians that we should desire the gift of prophecy. And that's exactly what Samuel was very, very well known for. When God blessed Hannah and gave her the child of Samuel, he did not stop there. He actually gave her more children down the line as well and gave her a greater blessing. In Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened for you. And the Bible study asks, What are your thoughts on God blessing his people today? My answer is that it's kind of hard to understand what is a blessing, what is a want, what is a desire, it all comes back down to that discernment that I feel like as a society today that we don't really understand or practice a whole lot. So it's hard to understand what is a blessing and what is a want and what is God's will because us as humans we want what's going to make us happy. Sometimes we don't see things that are actually blessings because we don't count them as blessings if it's not what we wanted. Sometimes God gives us a blessing in disguise that we don't really see until further down the road or we may never actually see because we're so focused on the things that we want versus what God actually has for us and the blessings that he has to give us. So yes, it is true that we as Christians don't spend a whole lot of time in prayer asking for these things. And yes, Matthew 7, 7 says that if you ask and it shall be given to you, um, but it also is all about your heart. If your heart is in the right place, you are desiring what God wants for you and God's will. And if your heart is in earthly things, then 
you're going to want those earthly blessings that and God's not going to be giving them to you. And then you're going to think you're not getting blessings when in reality you are. And it's just a big spiral downwards. So as we go throughout Samuel, we find out that eventually the Israelites are demanding that they have a king. They want a ruler. They want a king. They want someone to tell them what to do with their faith. So the Bible study asks, why do you think that people like being told what to do in their faith? And how do you think God feels about it? Well, from a humanly earthly standpoint, I completely understand why the Israelites wanted a king and wanted someone to tell them what to do. Um, one reason is that if someone's telling you what to do or someone's telling you how to live, lead your life with faith or someone's telling you how to live your faith, then you're not responsible for the outcome that happens. You're not responsible for your own actions because you're being told what to do. It's someone else's responsibility. And not having that responsibility is something that we as humans desire. We don't want to take our responsibility for our actions. Now, how does God feel about this? Well, he gives us the free will to choose. He gave us that choice and he wants us to take responsibility for our actions. So when Saul was appointed the king for the Israelites, he started off great, but then he began to fall. The texts even say that the spirit came mightily upon him, meaning that he was walking in the spirit for the time of being, and he feared the Lord. The Bible study asks, what does it mean to fear the Lord, and how do you fear the Lord? Most people in today's society think that fearing the Lord has this negative connotation to it. Most people think that it's a bad thing, that why would you fear a God of love? That's not the point. But in reality, the term fear the Lord could kind of be replaced in our society as respect for the Lord. We are to have respect as a father figure, as um, a higher being. So the word fear the Lord does not really mean exactly what we see the word fear meaning today. It's more of a respect for God, for our creator, for the man who makes everything possible for us. Um, he, we owe him everything. He gives us life. He gives us our blessings. He gives us every little thing that we have, every step we take, every move we make is directly from him. And we are to respect him because at any point he could take it all away. It's all in his timing. It's all in his will. So after Saul was king, um, Samuel sent for Jesse because God directed him to this man and this family. And he sent to, for Jesse to get all of his sons and send them to them because God was going to appoint one of them as the new king. So long story short, the youngest son of Jesse ended up being picked. Now this was odd because usually the youngest son doesn't get jack squat in that time period. So the youngest son is David and David ends up being the new king. So the Bible study asks, how did his family feel about David being appointed the new king uh, and being the youngest son? Well, his father didn't even send for him at first until everyone else had been ruled out. So then he finally said, well, I have one more son. We'll see about him. And he ends up being the king. So I imagine that the rest of his family were pretty jealous and pretty upset about the fact that their youngest brother and youngest son is now going to be the king and they're probably thinking well I could have done better than that <laughs> so I'm sure that his family did probably treat him differently so if you have gone to church your whole life or you grew up in church you probably heard the story of David and Goliath it is one of the most overused stories in the Bible <laughs> so yes this is the same David the youngest son of Jesse who was going to be the new king he ends up defeating Goliath uh, in this big battle with just a slingshot and a stone and it's this big glorious heroic story and this is just God showing his work in David's life. So the Bible study makes the point to say that the Holy Spirit came upon David and helped him kill and defeat Goliath. So in the New Covenant we have the same Holy Spirit that empowers us. So one of the big questions is what Goliaths in your life are you fighting? that you need God's help to overcome. By reading 1 Samuel, you can see that God empowers David to defeat Goliath. And we are able to do the same with the Goliaths in our life. But we have to, they have to do the... Uh, guys, it's 10.30 something. It's 1036 and I'm tired. <laughs> so after David defeated Goliath, 
Saul was obviously pretty jealous that, you know, he's technically the king and he couldn't defeat Goliath, but here comes David, this little man who is all of a sudden going to be defeating Goliath. He was jealous, so he chased David all over the countryside to try and defeat him and kill him. But little did he know that that was not in God's plan. No, no, no. So we actually see that David was given two different chances to kill Saul, and David is being a man of God, chose not to take those opportunities. So we see that David did not take the opportunities to kill Saul when he was given them uh, because he knew that God had better plans. So after Saul, so, <laughs> so Saul and his sons end up going into battle and all of his sons end up dead, killed in battle, and then Saul gets wounded and in order to keep these uncircumcised men from killing him, Saul decides that he's going to take his own life because his armor bearer was too scared to do it. <laughs> So, Saul, his three sons, his armor bearer, all die on the same day, and two of which are basically suicides. And it just adds more irony to the story because David could have killed Saul two times before that, and instead he didn't because God had bigger plans. You just gotta, then you gotta wrap it up. How do I wrap this up? This is the end of 1 Samuel. <laughs> Tune in Wednesday for the continuing saga. Da da da! That, that clip was going in, <laughs> just so you know. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Um, I know that it was pretty short, but and a little bit all over the place. But we will be covering Second Samuel on Wednesday instead of next week, simply because I did not have time to read Second Samuel. <laughs> so if you're on this journey with me, remember to read Second Samuel for Wednesday, and um, I will be putting that video out sometime Wednesday afternoon. So look for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And remember, the Bible is good for you. Bye!